Today, we're going to code this bad boy. We're going to make our own paint editor with random squares, with random circles, an eraser, and if you press the Y key, some really weird stuff coded by AI. So let's see, let's see how this goes. Follow along. Go to code.strivemap.com. Come to this little sidebar over here. We're going to find Art Sketchpad. Click Switch to Simple Mode. Opens everything we need. And now we are ready to code this bad boy. So let's get started with milestone one. Super easy, draw a circle, we've done that before. So all I'm gonna do after here, I'm gonna say circle, let's put it wherever. Let's go 200, 200, diameter of 100. And let's bring in our crosshair so that we have some help if needed with getting coordinates. Cool, let's have a look. Okay, one thing though, we'll notice that we have the, what the circle looks like, it's quite small, let me make this bigger. What you'll notice the circle looks like is it doesn't have a fill. So it's just the outline of the circle and it's blue. So how do we do that? The way we do that is we use a command, I think it is, we'll either use UI called no fill. Yes, okay, it disappears, right? But now we need to make the border really thick. So we're gonna say stroke weight and let's say a stroke weight of 10. It's black, so you can't see it. And now I'm gonna say stroke and it's say blue. Cool, there we go. So the no fill just takes away the inside of any shape we wanna draw. Stroke weight makes it super thick. Stroke blue makes our color blue. Okay, we've got our circle. What is our next milestone? Milestone two is we wanna move the circle with the mouse. So what we have is these variables called mouse X and mouse Y and I'm gonna actually show you guys this. So there's another command called text, and I'm gonna say text. You give, when I say text, what I can say is I can say, hi mom. And so this is gonna print whatever is in here. And now just you specify the position of it. So let's say 400, 400. Okay, because our stroke is so thick, hi mom is coming off quite straight. So we need to change our stroke weight back down to two. And then you can see it, let's go stroke weight one. And I think we need to make our text size bigger. And then we can see this, yeah, okay, cool. So now you can see hi mom is printed to the screen. What we can do instead of printing hi mom is we can print numbers. So I can print the number five and get five. But what I'm gonna print are these variables. I'm gonna print mouse X. And it needs to be spelled exactly like this. If you spell it like this, you're gonna get an error. You can see name mouse X is not defined. So mouse X, and now you'll notice when I move my mouse left and right, the text printing out the value of my X corner of my mouse is changing. So you can see I'm at 237 and it's printing out 237. I could do the same for my mouse Y and it's gonna be on top of one another. So it's just change where that's printed. And there we go. Now we can see the top one is printing my Y position and the bottom one is printing my X. What I can do is I can take these and replace them into circle. So I can say circle mouse X and circle mouse Y. And now it's gonna follow my circle. Let's get rid of crosshair. It's getting a little bit disturbing. So cool, now we've got a circle that's following the mouse and we can go ahead and get rid of text and all of this stuff. Let's just comment it out for now. And I do want to make our font size just a little bit bigger so you can follow along with me nicer. Okay, cool. So we have our circle. Next, milestone. Create a continuous line of circles. So the way that this program is working is it's running in an, a fancy word called an infinite loop. What happens is, my camera's falling over. What happens is that this line of code runs then it runs line two, then it runs line three, then it runs line four. It gets to the end of the program. In our case right now, the end of the program is line seven because all of these guys are commented out. When it gets to line seven, it will then jump back to line one and then back to line two, back to line three. So what's happening really is that we're drawing the circle and then we're drawing a background on top of it and we're drawing another circle and we draw a background on top of it and we draw another circle, background, so. If we get rid of our background, then there's nothing blocking the previous circles. And now you'll notice as I drag, I'm getting a continuous line of circles where I move. So it's getting a little bit funky because of this draw tick axis. So let's go ahead and get rid of that guy as well. And there we go. We have a continuous line of circles. Let's see, cool. Let's move on to milestone four, create randomly sized circles. 
In a similar way, we control the X and Y coordinates using mouse X, mouse Y. I can also control my size. So if I wanted to make my size mouse X, notice what, that's actually so cool. Oh, that's so cool. So the size of my circle now increases with my X coordinate. And you can try and fill in. It's going to be very hard to fill in the far left side. Very easy to fill in the far right side. Our stroke weight is a little high. I want to make it a bit smaller. And oh, look at that. It's art. Cool. But what we're going to learn about instead of doing mouse X is a command called random. And the way that random works is let's use text again to show. So I actually want to bring back our background. Otherwise, it's going to get crazy. Background blue. Oh, and the circle's blue. Okay, that doesn't work. Background black. And now we should be good. Yes, cool. Oh, it's so cool. Now, if I want to show you random, so I'm going to bring back text, and now we get that guy. Let's bring back the stroke weight and text size so we can see it. So here we're printing the position of mouse Y. Instead of printing the position of mouse Y, I'm going to print random, and I'm going to print it... Okay, immediately what you'll see is we're just getting all of these crazy numbers. Let's make this way bigger so you can see this more clearly. Yeah, there we go. Okay, you can maybe see this a little bit better. And I can bring in fill. Do I just need to say fill again in order to get rid of no fill? Yes, okay, cool. So if I say fill again, we're then overriding this no fill so we can see this. And so you'll see it's just going crazy with random numbers. What I can do with this random number thing is I can give it a minimum value it needs to be and a maximum value it needs to be. And so let's say I want the smallest it can be to be one and the biggest to be 10. And what we'll notice over here is that we're getting a bunch of numbers, but they're all between one and 10. If I go one and a thousand, we're going to get a bunch of numbers, but they're all going to be between one and a thousand. So we can use that for our size of our circle. Let's comment all of this stuff out again. And I'm going to say circle, and now in the size position, I'm going to say random, and let's say anywhere between, let's say, 1 and 50. And now what you'll notice, if I get rid of background, we'll get these differing size of circles as I move my mouse around. If I want to make that more severe or bigger, 1 to 100, and we get a pretty cool effect. Awesome. Okay. That is... That is this milestone, I think. Yeah, okay. Next is create randomly colored circles. So we learned previously with fill, right? When we want to fill something, we could fill it green, for example, like this. And then, okay, now we're getting rid of the fill. So we don't actually want to change it. Because notice, we don't want to have the inside fill. We only want the border. So close that. So we want to change... This. So we can say stroke blue, or another way we could say this is give it RGB values. So zero red, zero green, goes red, green, blue, and two, five, five, blue. And we're going to get the exact same thing. It goes red, green, blue, and it goes between zero and 255. Now, could we use the same thing we did here, but now just for color? So what we can do is say random... And now they go between 0 and 255, so 0 to 255. So generate a random blue, a random number for our blue. And you'll see I'm going to get differing shades of blue now as it varies between 0 and 255. Let's just do the same for green and for red and green. So random 0, 255 and random 0, 255. Cool. And now we're getting a bit of a rainbow-like effect with this thing. So we've got changing size, we've got changing color. Let's see what's next. The next one is to draw different... Oh, no, you'll create randomly sized circles, mouse won't find. Okay, draw different shapes using keys. So where we are now, you can end here because now we're going to go to a little bit more of an advanced topic that can be covered in one of our later videos. This is really good. If you got up to here, awesome. But let's keep going. You can stop here or follow along with me if you feel so challenged. This will be for the more advanced. What we want to do, as we can see from the milestone, is when I change, I want to be able to change the color. No, sorry, not the color, the shape that I'm drawing between circles and squares. So we're going to learn about a few things here. The first thing we need to learn about is key code. So I'm going to bring back our comments here. So I'm going to uncomment all of these guys. Let's bring back our background so things aren't... Oh, look how crazy that looks. Look at that. It looks 
Wow. Okay, bring this back. And let's, as well, I just want to make this a little bit more centered instead of being all the way there. So let's make bring our text into the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to bring it to 300. 300! And let's make it even bigger so you guys can see. Okay, so now we've got our text. Instead of printing now a random number between 1 and 1,000, I'm going to print something called key code. And so now you're going to see 0 is on the screen. Now what I want you to do for me is click on the screen, make sure you click here because you need to be able to activate it, and press a button on your keyboard. What you'll notice when you press a button on your keyboard, a different number is going to show up. So right now I'm pressing the up arrow key and I'm getting 38. I'm pressing the left, I get 37. I press down, I get 40. 39, I get an arrow key. This is a whole thing called ASCII, which maps every key on your keyboard to a number. So every single key has a number associated with it. And that's how computers do fancy stuff with text. What we want to do, though, is we want to use some sort of logic to say, hey, when, I, when the key code is 37, I want to print circles. And when the key code is 38, I want to print squares. The way we do that is with if statements. So I'm going to do a very quick introduction to if statements. The way those works is you say if, and now you want to compare one thing to another thing. So in this case, we're going to compare key code. So if key code, and we want to say if this key code is 37, which is what we talked about previously, we want to print, let's say, a circle in this case. So if key code equals, going over if statement super quick here, equals is a way of comparing it. So if I say, you're, if I use a variable and I say a is equal to 50, I'm saying take the value of 50 and put it into a. If I use equals equals, I'm saying are these two things the same? It's almost like asking a question. So equals is this is equal to 50. Equals equals is like, is this equal to 50? So if key code equals 37, you now want to use semicolon to say, okay, that's the start of my if statement. And now we start on a different indentation. So there's, you'll press the tab key over here because you only want to run a certain block of code if the key code is equal to 37. You don't want to run all the code. You only want to run the certain block of code. Let's show you what I'm talking about. So now I'm going to say circle. So let's move the circle command over here. And now you'll notice Okay. Oh, because we have two circles. So I need to get rid of the circle. Let's get rid of this guy. And now you'll notice there is no circle on the screen. Only, I'm going to start, I'm going to reduce my font size so you can see all the code again. Only if I press the left arrow key do I get a circle. If it's not pressed because the key code is currently not equal to 37. So only when the key code is equal to 37, um, show the circle. And so now we can do the same thing with with the square. So now I'm going to say if key code equals 38, which I think is the up arrow key, you'll notice again, semicolon, and let's say square. And now square similarly, we need mouse x, mouse y, and then a size of it as well, random 0 to 100. And 38, cool, we get a square. And now you see, I can switch between circles and squares as I press up and down. That is, oh, take out the background in order to get the fancy effect. Left, and there we go. We got circles, we got squares. Let's get rid of, let's comment out this so we don't see all of that stuff. And we get this really cool kind of pattern. Okay, what is the next milestone? Create an eraser and clear the board. Here it takes a little bit of logic. So we're not actually going to clear the board. All we're going to do is draw over it. Because our background is black, so if we draw over our shape with black, we won't be able to see it. So now, okay, we've, we put key code 38 for, for our square. Let's close this and say, if my key code, if key code, let's do 39. I think that's a key. I'm sure it will be. We'll find out. If key code is 39, I now want to fill my circle. So notice this equals is wrong. It needs to be equals. And you fill my circle black. You can use any shape, but in this case, we're going to say black. And then I'm going to say circle at mouse X, mouse Y, and I'm going to give it a size, let's say, of 50. Okay. Left, up, right. Yes. Okay. So the right arrow key is 39. So you'll notice I can draw, draw, draw. I press the up arrow key. I'm going to draw squares. And now if I press the right arrow key, Okay, 
I'm now getting a, so my circle is filled black, but we still have this outline. So we need to get rid of the outline. So I think we can say no stroke in a similar way we say no fill. So circles, yes, and there we go. Now we have an eraser. So see what you're able to draw with this kind of stuff. You can create some pretty, pretty cool things and then see if you want to play around with this. Maybe make a thing that when you press a number, it will be a bigger eraser or smaller eraser. You can make a whole drawing app. You can go and make Photoshop if you want in this. If you do, let me know because that will be very impressive. So if I make this a little bit bigger, it might work a little bit nicer. Yeah, I like it. Okay, that is that. I wonder if we could use, what could we try with AI here to make this a little bit more funky? So this is live. I, have it, I haven't planned this, so let's see how this goes. What could be cool to do? Let's say, let's say, let's do something like if my mouse is in the left side of the screen. So let's split, let's ask it. Let's see how well it does. So I'm going to ask the AI, split my screen in half. And if it's on the left side of the screen, make the background black. If it's on the right side of the screen, make the background red. It's not that exciting. How do we make that more exciting? Or you could do an Easter egg. We could ask for ideas. What simple things can I do to make the project more exciting? Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Okay, she has some ideas to add more variety. You can change shape. Instead of plain black, how about making a color random? Try varying their size. Background. Yeah, let's, okay, let's try this. I'm going to try ask it. I like this. Perhaps you could show some text when the user clicks the mouse. Let's say if the user, let's say this, if you press the Y button, I want an explosion to happen of different shapes. Let's see how well it does. So when the user presses the Y button, create an explosion of different shapes. Let's see, let's see how we go. To create an explosion of different shapes with the Y keys press, you can create multiple random shapes, different size. Okay, let's see. Cool, so if key, oh, I wonder if this works. So this is where, yeah, now it's gonna do, okay. So you notice it's starting to do some more advanced stuff. It's got the four, it's got a for loop in here. It's doing a bunch of much more complicated things. So this is where using AI is risky because if you introduce it, you could break your code but you could also make it super cool. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to just copy paste all of it and I will be able to help fix this. So let's see. Okay. Oh, so now the indentation did not work. Let's see if I can get that indentation. Yes, there we go. Okay. So we haven't gotten an error, which is good. I am going to take pause right now. If you want to copy this code to see if it works. So pause the video copy this code. Let's just write it out word for it and see, let's see if it works. Carrying on. So if the key is Y, so make sure it's running. I'm going to press Y. Does it work? Okay. No capital Y. Oh my God. It works. Wow. So if caps lock is on and you press Y, you will get an explosion of shapes. Cool. <laughs> and then left. I just get one shape up. Okay. Wasn't as exciting, but we got something and you can see how you might be able to use AI to make your projects more exciting. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna end here. Good job.